Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Humans of Magic. I'm your host, James Sue. Today, I am interviewing Zhi Ming, also known as James Zhi, also known as one of the most accomplished Chinese magic players, competitive magic players, over the past decade. This is the first time I've had a Chinese guest on Humans of Magic, despite having done this show out of China for so long. And it's a long time coming, but I'm really happy to present a deep dive into the state of magic in terms of James's career, but also in terms of organized play, how things are in the Middle Kingdom, and how Wizards is treating the game of Magic the Gathering in these parts of the world. Please enjoy this conversation with James Zhu. All right, quick plug before we get into the episode. Two things you can do to help Humans of Magic. Number one, please hit that subscribe button. Please subscribe to the channel, get notified uh, for both the Humans of Magic main channel as well as the Humans of Magic Clips channel, which is linked from the show notes. Secondly, if you have a little bit of extra motivation, extra time, extra finances, really appreciate if you could support our Patreon at patreon.com slash humans of magic. This is going to be the best way to support the show from a financial perspective. It's going to help me put out more high quality episodes and do more interesting conversations with more people. Please enjoy this episode. Who is James Zhu? So I don't have a stunning resume. Like I've been playing magic since uh, 20, 2013 or 2012 and from return to Ravnica and uh, in 20, uh, I mean, I was busy working at that time, but after two years work, I, I guess in 2015, I started to like full-time grinding MTGO. And uh, among that time, it was a hard time, you know, I, I've been grinding very hard, but uh, they failed to go to Proto. And uh, my first PT was in KTK, I think. Um, oh, no, no, Among Cats, yeah, actually. Yeah, Proto Among Cats. And uh, then... From uh, 20, 2017 to 2019, I was, I mean, I play every Pro Tour and I uh, try to like run it harder. And uh, of course, I've been full time playing. And uh, at that time, I was, um, I was several level, but five pro points away from gold. Then they announced that every uh, pro player system changed in 2019. And then there are something like MTJ Arena, and then at the MTJ Arena is first Invitational. I was uh, there was a rank right, uh, uh, top A player get to the um, MTJ A Invitation, which is a very big uh, big event. So I was a run up, like uh, I was ranked at number one two hour before the deadline. Uh, at that time, I would play GP in Los Angeles, and then uh, I wait. So since the rank will be, you know. Um, stay a while. People are not catching you. Then people catch you, and then you go down. So I will go. I will. There are like thirty minutes. I say, oh, I'm in same <laughs> place. I have to play. Well, there are something like my friend helped have to just. They say, hey, you can wait, and I will pair you. And and I actually didn't pair him, but the last moment I didn't make it. So that was a turning point. Then I just, I mean, quit magic for like maybe half a year. I would say, but. I'm not really quitting, but uh, at that time I didn't like focus anymore because my uh, daughter born. And uh, after that, I just occasionally played uh, like some magic tournaments on MTG Arena. Then it happened that there was a Rivals and the MPL generation. Um, at that time, actually, I was pretty close to like the Messi point race i was like i was also a little bit unlucky but i was a run-up at the mpl mario league uh because the like top 32 missing points or 16 africa so i was like uh, uh one or two sh missing points short to be hit the uh, rivals then i quick magic again you know so uh then like uh I only play, <laughs> yeah, I still play Magic, and I, I start to use streaming, and then, <laughs> I never really quit, I quit like, I, I told my friend I quit like a thousand times, but I always came back, um, so anyway, I was streaming since like 2020, uh, I would say I, I enjoyed streaming, and sometimes it, 
uh, people will just give you gifts. You know, just not not a lot of money, but it is possible. It made me have more incentive to stream more, and I've been sharing my like magic content, uh, like、uh, writing some articles, whatever. But、uh, it's not a main source of income, and I kind of just seeing it's a like semi job, or I I do it quite seriously, but not seriously enough. So,、uh, well,、uh, toward now I am. Oh, oh! I forgot to mention. Last year, I got pretty lucky since I、uh, during the COVID、uh, era, right? So we have everything, every tournament online, and I got pretty lucky to hit a, you know, a PT from the MTG Arena PTQ, and、uh, then I、uh, catch up some old friends, and I say, hey, hey I, I qualified for these things. Can I just join your group? Um, and、uh, Gavin just took me. <laughs> I, I, I have a. Like very rare opportunity to prepare with some big names. I've been, like, I always adore the pro players, the former pro players, and no, no one is pro now for sure. But you know, I've been have chance to prepare with some big names, and I have some results. Like,、uh, I luckily top a my first PT, and、uh, so that I、uh, play wars last year. It didn't went too well, but、um, well, long story short, now I'm still play magic, but. Very, I would say I, I the the same.、Uh, if I if there are tur big tournaments came up, for instance,、uh, next two weeks there will be the RC in Tianjin.、Mm -hmm. uh, do you know that? So then I can just play full time Magic for like two weeks. Maybe I was streaming sometime. But if there are no tournament for me, I will just enjoy. I、uh, mainly Arena Opens or the new format,、mm -hmm. Limited. Since I love Limited, so. Yeah, I haven't opened Arena for like last two、okay. weeks, but、uh, I'm about to. <laughs> well, briefly, this is me, and <laughs> it's my experience. So yeah, nobody magic, really、sure. quits Magic where you just put it on on hold for a while and then you come back because the there's still something about the game that that、uh, that makes you want to come back, right? I guess it's like qualifying for for high level events is is always your your motivation. Is that is that true? Like playing with high level players. Uh, yeah, part of it is, and I think the R and D shout out to R and D doing a very good job. I think it keep the game, they keep the game、uh, more and more interesting. For for limited, from my perspective,、yeah. limited at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least from from my experience, I never find it、uh, just. It's nothing. The format is nothing.、Uh, there are some like,、uh, maybe、uh, a little bit lucky oriented format. Uh, but overall, I I always find the game new, you know,、uh, something I can learn from. So I've been writing an article about the, my feeling toward Magic. Is、uh, I think I'm improving myself every single year, and if I stop improving or just having progress, I will stop playing. But I always feeling I'm、uh, making progress on Magic, not not only the. Uh, skill level, like in-game plays level, but also the mindset and the, how magic can bring the new knowledge to me in life. So I always been very grateful for the game, and not only a game for me. So I never took it really as a game or hobby. I I, I always thinking、um, it's a career for me, even though they just cancel all the <laughs> pro things. Right. So <laughs>、um, I think I should set some context for listeners because listeners may not. Be so familiar with the magic or competitive magic scene in in China in 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 China specifically. I believe, and this is maybe some a a, a time where you don't need to be so humble or chenshui, right? Like I think you are one of the most accomplished magic pro players in China over the last decade, if I'm not mistaken. Is that is that fair statement? Like, are you on that list of maybe like three or five or ten people? You know? Yeah, maybe on the list. Yeah, there are. Well, first of all, magic is not really. Um, I、uh, have to say actually, magic is not that popular as it is in U.S. Um, in China, you know, everybody knows like a a loser. Yeah. What do you call Hearthstone. 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 Yeah. yeah. Hearthstone.、Mm -hmm. Everybody knows like.、Uh, yeah, yeah. Hearthstone. Yeah.、Uh, Le League of Legends. Legends. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that games. I, I don't play those games by the way, but. Uh, well, anyway, Magic is not that popular game, and the the、um, the population playing Magic mainly like 
because they enjoy the game, not because they like to make a living of it. So it makes uh, if you say you are uh, like I'm a Chinese, right? I'm a, the best uh, magic player in China. It, it doesn't mean too much, I think. I, I I'm not really anybody. I mean, just not really be impressed by it. So, um, so from uh, then we talk about uh, like the ranking about uh, like you said last decades of top whatever. It's just uh, China have been like uh, achieving quite a big, big uh, magical actually like. Uh, I don't really recall the years, but you know, Liu Yuchen, he took China to mm -hmm. uh, Magic World Cup and uh, top paid the Magic World Cup uh, two consecutive years. But I don't know why they mm -hmm. can cancel the Magic World Cup. But uh, and uh, previous to that, uh, uh, Zhang Ziyang had been leading uh, China. I was saying uh, 20 years ago, they, they won mm -hmm. a World Cup in Rome. So, uh, and yeah, not mention like Chinese Taipei and the Chinese Hong Kong. We have a lot of big names like Li Shitian and the uh, Hao Shan Huang, Zi Jingguo, and they are. I mean, at, at that time I was starting right. to play Mary. They already be very accomplished. So I'm not just, uh, yeah, 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 there are a lot of names. So I'm not mention everybody. So uh, I do think I'm a just I'm an okay player. I, I won't call me like top whatever, and I always be very grateful for I have the chance to test with some of the name I mentioned and have been a friend with them to have a longer just a lot of mm -hmm. benefits outside of magic so well anyway I, I would say just in China magic small things and uh, people do have it for fun so we don't really rank anything and uh, well hopefully we can <laughs> once the, the the you know the bread and the is, is bigger so everybody can just enjoy it. I, so. I think I think there's like two things, yeah. right? Because if you think of like magic players who everyone that plays magic in China and then people who are playing at your level, which is like yeah. trying to grind for pro tours and things like that. I think there's it's like a funnel, right? Like a mm -hmm. uh, in Chinese, like a like a lodo, like like everybody. But then um, I think due to various reasons, for example, there's no there's no money in magic or there's no infrastructure. That's why very few people will actually be trying to seriously try to make a career or grind like competitive magic. But how many people do you think are actually trying to do that? Because I still feel like in the LGSs, people are still trying to play RCQ, still trying to qualify. Um, like maybe it's they're casual, but they're still yeah. like, oh, if I get it, I'll great. Then I'll try to play uh, the high level tournament. But like, you're just saying that maybe there's only a few people that are like really seriously preparing for every single one, but like of the people that are really seriously preparing, yeah, like yeah. how many people do you think in China are doing that? Do you have like some estimation of that? Uh, well, I have a local group. We still, we're still like talking about magic in this local group. There are some new competitive guys. I would say less This than is just in, in Shanghai, 30. right? Or in... Uh, China is a big one. Uh, from your group, like well, nationally, from my like just, group, okay, there so... are 30 but I, I know there will be a lot of strong players I don't know from the arena area. I'm not just saying my group is best, but uh, well, overall, I want um, maybe less than 100 players mm -hmm. are really serious. Um, by really serious, I mean they are not just work and uh, have dinner, play with kids and play magic for two hours. They are like... Uh, skip work for two weeks. Okay. You know? okay. <laughs> just like what I did. And, so it's a small number. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very small mm -hmm. compared to the large population. So going back to what you said, you started playing, you started at least being introduced to Magic in 2012. What's the mm -hmm. thing that made yeah. you decide to be so committed to the game? Like back then, right? Obviously it's different now for you, but like back then, was there some event or something that made you believe that, okay, I need to be really like dedicated to, to, to Magic? Well, ironically, at the first... Uh... Um, magic was introduced uh, to our school by a uh, like a university program. Or, well, I would say this. Uh, I was a leader in some broad mm -hmm. game programming university, and that time I know magic by the another a big a very good friend of me now still friend of me from another university. So we are just introduced in magic for making the money from wizards because they introduced game to the school and now we can get some fund and uh, you know so at that time i i touched getting touched with magic but at that time i even just i learning how to play it and 
I, I hate it. I don't like it. I'm not. I'm not hating it. I, I just learn it, but I don't like it. So, uh, one or two years later, then a group of mine, other board game. You know, we are play. Yeah, Sambu-san. it's uh, uh, just to translate it. It's like a that board game, a card cool game, game, but with like Romance of the Three Kingdoms, uh, <laughs> uh, flavor. Okay, I'm trying yeah, to yeah. translate it for for <laughs> English audience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's another very popular, way more well, popular time, than Magic uh, uh, game in China. So. Yeah, yeah, so the Sangwasha friends introduced this game to me. We were very competitive in the Three Kingdom Kill, <laughs> the, the board game, right? So then he introduced Magic to me, and I play it. And uh, for the reason to be played with those group, you know, we have to maintain the friendship, right? I have to be played with them. So I try force myself on, uh, well, not that hard, but at, fir- at the first time, I- I'm not really into it. Well, so the... Uh, university groups, um, I would say like seven peoples. And we we still every week we play magic, just draft and go to stores, have collections. We, we even build rules to how to use the uncommon and the forest. Uh, twelve uncommon. This is a rule. So you cannot play more than four rares. Okay. Okay. <laughs> then we just fight okay, each so other. You have some it was rules. super interesting. Okay. And uh, so if if there are not those groups, I want to maintain the relationship mm-hmm. with. I won't play this game. So, um, this is a very beginning. But uh, like one years later, um, there were. So at that time, I I just graduated and and uh, I found my job pretty early. Luckily, <laughs> so I was working in an accounting firm and uh, well. It was very busy, but every Friday I would go to the magic uh, stores to play with some, uh, just not not no more. Uh, actually, not the those same group I have in the previous. Like they took me to magic. Then I, myself just just every mm-hmm. Friday I played Friday night magic. There was a very uh, like, um, I would say it became a habit of me. I just ride a uh, bicycle to the store and uh, came back forty five minutes. Whatever, so then it become a habit, and uh, I at first I being really bad at it, but I want to win. So, <laughs> and then I uh, learn from it, uh, learn from some masters in the local store. Basically, they just um give you some advice. So surely, like uh, um two years, I found it too addict- addictive. I just every day I'm thinking about magic, so. Then it kind of drive me to play a uh, first um, tournament, which was the GP in China. I said, and yeah, it was a, it was a KTK seal, the GP, and uh, I have no bias, but I got six and three. I didn't make day two, but it was a very good feeling. Then uh, there was a GP in Hong Kong, and then my friends told me, "Hey, there was a GP in Hong Kong. Do you like to go?" I, I, I actually at that time I, I was mm-hmm. quite competitive already. So I got my two buys and uh, I cashed uh, in GP Hong Kong for like uh, um, 13th or 12th place or 11th place for like, uh, um, yeah, around. So that was your first, that was your first major uh, achievement, major tournament finish. Yeah, first cash. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then I think, oh, I can make money for these things. <laughs> it's that's great. Like at that time, I have a, a gap in my like a uh, real job because we, uh, as an accounting firm, they were, uh, we will have a lot of uh, like vacations. I can took uh, like two hours to study for the accounting certificate. So at that time, I took those time to play magic series. <laughs> you can say this, right? Yeah, hopefully, thing, right? because now you're no longer working <laughs> at the the firm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. It's it's not busy. And uh, well, anyway, the cash make me overconfident, cause I think I can make a living towards this. And then I found I, I consistently play uh, Magic Online and I play like American time zone. I was really just into it and I tried to make a living off it. The very first time it was so yeah, it was disastrous to just quit your job to magic. I wouldn't recommend ever. Wait, is that what you did? That. So you no longer you but, were not, no uh, longer doing accounting or no, no. I, I, I'm doing accounting for my uh, friends actually. Some a small, like, uh, just, just, just no, no okay. more like. No, what, I'm, what I'm saying is like when I you cashed the, the the Hong Kong GP, like, did you decide like, 
uh, you no longer had a full time job back then? Or were you always doing accounting for your friends even back? Yeah, it's uh, I, uh, there was a, you know, the, the translate. Well, it uh, happened in three months, I think I would say just okay. uh, at first, uh, I, I, I just go to the firm still and uh, try to just uh, pick up my uh, last year's like a lot of routine jobs, uh, routine works. Then uh, when the busy season comes, I, I feel so stressful. Mm. <laughs> I want to run away from the busy season. So uh, it's not exactly accounting. It was like auditing. Uh, yes. Audit. Okay. So uh, I, I was in audit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, that yeah. was that was it's seasonal, right? The, the job is like uh, I have a lot of free time and free season, and I use that time to play magic instead of uh, mm. learning, like having a certificate. So <laughs> I, I'm scared for the. I, I will just admit it. I'm scared for the busy season. So I think, oh, whatever. Just like, let me try that. Mm. So I, I choose a comfort way. So magic is a, kind of a mm. comfort zone for me. So, so you honestly. believed at the time yeah. uh, that, you know, you could make some sort of income or living through, through magic. So naturally you put more time into it. And was it a, it sounds like it wasn't ex mm. exactly what you expect. Like maybe it's a disaster or like something ha like. Yeah, this is a disaster for sure. To, well, in China, we don't need too many. Um, well, generally saying in China, the cost in China, the living could like the cost well, of living is, or well, the cost of living is not that higher in US. So if you are grind magic online, you can have like a thousand US dollar per month, uh, a thousand tickets per month you can sell and it just you mm. can just have an income, right? It's not consistent, but sort of we can expect to have a like have those payments to pay a bill. But then um, I have a good uh, wish. I mean, I, I have expectation since there are GP every month in GP in China, also GP in Japan. So I would assume I will cash at least one of the two GPs okay. in the future. But then, <laughs> but then it's not just sustainable enough because uh, Magic Online, I'm keep losing. I, I never queue for any like uh -huh. PTQ. I play every PTQ at that time. And I play like, a lot of different formats. I've been never touching to like more than, I hate more than so much at that time because okay. I just can't win. And uh, then uh, GP also just, I, so everything just falls. And I have some saving, I have some savings and uh, I have to just, uh, well, in, I would say within one year or so one and a half years, I already, be burned out and I look for another job and uh, I was doing another job with his friends and uh, then everything just just back to the work uh, oriented I, I still just play magic very very seriously but the work is uh, you know I, I have to go to the office and uh, I was on a sales work so I have mm -hmm. to go to office but not every day then every Monday I have to have the meeting in the Monday noon, right? So, but the the real issue is a Sunday night there will be a PTQ. So a schedule conflict. So you cannot yeah. get up in Monday noon. Yeah, 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 I have to just go to the meeting without uh, without any sleep. Maybe sleep only <laughs> half an hour. If I um, well, if you're losing in the PTQ, it's fine. Yeah. But if you're winning, you know, it it will go into the morning of the Chinese time zone. So then the meeting with mm -hmm. spots mm -hmm. be disastrous. <laughs> and, uh, and then after like uh, only three or four months, I because quit again. Because the schedule is just not compatible. And uh, yeah. then, yeah, and I, I was winning. I think I top eight my first GP at that time. So, and uh, my, uh, so magic toward me is the, it's too important that time. I, I, I was told uh, since, since I cannot afford my like, I cannot pay my bill at that time. So I have to just quit it for, I'm not quitting it. I just cutting some time to work, but it's not really, I never just left it. So I still always thinking about it. Then I would say it's lucky, right? Luckily at that period of time, something pay off or I win something. I win a tournament called the Magic Online Limited Championship. Um, that's a tournament with, uh, you have to win a, a so-called, just like a, you have to mm -hmm. win a PPTQ for a qualification, and then all every qualified player 
uh, eventually like uh, six hundred or five hundred players play uh, it's, one it's a, big is tournament. It, it's, is it like is limited. it like the mocks? Then because the, I don't I don't do limited on Magic Online, but I do a little bit of like legacy and modern on Magic Online. Is it like mocks? M O C. It's like uh, it's like an invite tournament that you have to qualify for or something. Yeah. Yeah, basically, it, it offers a lot of prize, but no invitations. So you are not invited, oh, anything, I but see. the prize pool is quite good. Like I had, yeah, I won that tournament. That's the first tournament I win in like Magic Online for like four years, five years, uh, three years. So this is the first tournament I win. So it boosts my confidence. And uh, like shortly after that, that was uh, Armand kind of Limited, and uh, I I know how to like approach these things. And uh, then I top in my first GP in Beijing. It all, also the Armand Khan Limited. So I, at that time so that, I have- uh, you're, at, you're at the I top have, of your level uh, at that gradually time. Yeah, or, yeah I, I, form, I form, uh, form a new theory of uh, how to approach ma ma limited magic. And uh, after that, I follow these rules. And uh, then it, it triggered me actually. This win gave me confidence, but also my understanding reach of new level. So I would say just, um, I, 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 now I deeply know if I play more of this, I can catch more and, uh, I can make a living by that. Um, so then I, I try to, this is time more rational, right? Not quit because it's fun. It's because I know exactly I right. can just afford my livings. Right. Because so you know, you know your capabilities, yeah. what you can do. Um, I want to go back a little bit to like, when you first started playing between the time that you start playing competitively on Friday and cashing the Hong Kong GP, like, who are the people that helped you get better as a player? And what did you learn in that time to allow you to cash? It's it's more like, a, how did you level up question in those early days? Um, <laughs> actually, I think the main factor is lucky. <laughs> oh, come on. I you can't don't say you're lucky. You many... gotta have done something, right? There are definitely a lot of good guys helping me do that or at least in the local game store i it's no longer there in the store but uh, the store is quite competitive they are not just only for collections or oh we open some rares everybody happy but we actually study uh so when uh when we finish the uh, we first of all we do the swiss draft we are not actually single elimination most stars most of stars use single elimination because they can mm. just fire another draft and make money right but we do this with and the the loose the loose player so, will so play the store the and the players are player much more serious about play. like the practicing and yeah yeah they are, they are more serious about the place instead of the value of the which is very uncommon it's because fun, all the but, magic stores uh, i go to we, now we everybody's very, just opening packs yeah, yeah. and making money right yeah for sure yeah, yeah i know yeah, yeah, I'm grateful to the mm. the, the players in stores. Uh, obviously, they are not a lot of them. A lot of them are not playing Magic now, but uh, at that time, they helped me to form a right idea about Magic. It's not about, uh, um, well, I have to win this or that. There are variances, and I understand variances at that time. And uh, um, there are some teams called. Uh, Gulu Yard. I, I don't know not. you have heard that. You have to explain it anyways um, because the, someone the, listening to this yeah, will have no idea. That was a, so. Yeah, that was a game store. Uh, it was quite popular in... Uh, we are a big team in Shanghai uh, in back to 2014. So we basically uh, just win every PPTQ GPT at that time, right? Uh, so we basically just... Uh, the team always winning the all the prize pools. <laughs> so we just... Uh, if you you are facing a just good better matchups than me next round, I will concede to you, so you can beat him, so you get a prize. We're not can care who mm. wins. We just care about our team wins. So, yeah, this these guys are very competitive, and uh, um, I get in touch with them and join them. Uh, some of them must do my very. Uh, we have we have another team called the GXS, um, but well, we are more casually now, but. Uh, well, uh, the, those group of people, they've been to PTs, uh, absolutely just helped me a lot about okay. those competitive what, Was things. it a yeah. very easy to uh, become a member of this group? Like, because they can tell that you're very serious about wanting to improve or like, how, how did you get, like, is it invitation or like, do you <laughs> just say you want to join the group and you can join the group? 
So first of all, the store is nearby my home, so I can very frequently go to the store and play、okay. with the owner. And、uh, so you have a good relationship, and you show up a lot. We、okay. are, yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are naturally. They are not something like a test to or invitation to group. Basically, we just play draft every day, and、uh, I've been improving since every day I play with the PT player. <laughs> and uh, then uh, we, they, they were saying, "Hey,、uh, I, you can join because we want to. We already work together. You know, it's not something like specifically、uh, there's." Yeah, I, I think you're saying something like that. that's very universal, which is that all Magic players need to level up by working with. Great players, like there's no, there's basic. I have seen very rarely like someone who can just live in the city with no other Magic players and do it.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you need to figure, figure out, out and prepare with other <laughs>、um, people. And then I want, I want to also jump、mm-hmm. to what you said, which is like, okay, you win the significant Magic Online tournament, Amonkhet, and you also,、uh, you know, top eight the Beijing GP, yeah, yeah. right?、Um, You said you、yeah. developed some sort of system. Can you, can you briefly talk about the system? Because I I know it's probably hard because maybe you have like written like an entire book about like how to do the system. But like just for people that may not be so familiar, like, <laughs> are there some secrets that you can you can talk about? Yeah.、Uh, okay. So,、uh, long story short, I understand meta game. Um. So magic is about you have to. Counter your opponent's、uh, strategy. Right, we are not fighting a like a fair fight. That you have a two job, I have a two job. You have a bomb, I can kill it. I, I lose. So at that time, understand that I have for for example, I have eight eight card pool in the sealed. I can turn into into like ten decks. I can beat whatever scenarios I want. Um, but don't get me wrong. If the, you have the bomb deck, like six bomb,、uh, six rare, or in the same tel- color, you just stick to it. <laughs> you don't need to change anything. But most of the time, we have the deck of like、uh, rating one to ten. You have a six, you know. So the normal decks, but you have to go through those bomb decks and、uh, go through different color of opponent strategies. Well, basically, uh, my uh,、um, so. My master toward the meta game is I always build as much counter strategy as I can. Then,、uh, no matter it's a, like counter spell strategy or discard strategy, hyper aggro strategy, or the、uh, so I see the problem. I build a strategy for that. So at that time, I understand it's not about I already have three rare in the same color. I will stick it to the end. I will just see what you do, and I will counter your strategy. So. Uh, it, there's a shift of my mind because at first I always blaming just my pool is not good enough. Then I am always developing new, you know, new strategy of myself. So I try to counter others, choose to draw first, building、mm. decks more than forty cards. Try to、uh, play some very like action plan of the meta you can't block plans and、uh, try to destroy your land that time even. Try、so、to try to play fewer lands. Try to play more colors, even though consistency is low. So,、uh, well, overall, I know exactly how I lose this meta game more than,、um, you know, I lose to luck. But I would say that at that time, I I try to understand the non-luck factor, the factors I can change more than I used to. So, yeah, basically, it's it's a very brief. Just how I so you're you're saying it's not、yes. really about because I, again I'm a, I'm very much like a, a a bad limited player so for me like when I build a seal pool or draft it's just like I don't even care about my opponents it's just like what what what's the best deck I can build like for me there's only one way to build a a seal pool I and there's only one answer but you're saying that you master the meta game so much that you can have the、yeah. optionality you can have the option to be like I I I think. Like it's not just one deck, but、mm-hmm. if I have a six out of ten pool, like I can build it like three ways, like this, and three ways like this, and so you really have to understand at an extremely high level what the meta game and what your opponents could be doing because you're playing your opponents, not your own cards yeah, for your、yeah. pool. 
Yeah, uh, I, I I will say that、uh, you play、mm. Legacy, right? Um, yeah. So you will see Legacy. It's a permanent、uh, format, but、sure. also the meta shifts, like which deck beat. Yeah. So once people overplay the Taiwan decks, they will somebody will build some strategy、uh, either by putting more cyborg hates or just change the main deck figure a bit. So to target your meta, right? So I, I would say just Construct Limited does the same. I I think they are all they are all magic. They are the same logic, like counter matter. So overall, my limited skills to transform to constructed. It's 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 the same thing.、Mm-hmm. It's not like super secret. People always study the metas, but at first I would say meta is just lucky on lucky. But then I thinking more toward how to solve it, how to. Can you can you talk about that? Because you know, I know different people、yeah. understand the meta game or or analyze、mm-hmm. the meta game different ways. For example, some people might go to MTG Goldfish. Some people might look at、yeah. for constructed. Some people might look at seventeen lands. Some people might look at certain types of data. Like and and I know you're someone who's quite data driven. So how how does what your system like? Uh, how how does it work? Like what? How do you actually do the proper analysis? I basically nowadays the data are public everywhere. Everybody knows which the best at seventeen lands in limited.、Uh, well, I do think it's a、uh, good things like make people build better decks. But back to my days in、uh, well, yeah, it's different. Five six years ago, we don't have magic arenas. The data is then the meta games. Just if you figure the meta yourself, you have more advantage. But now that it does do advantage here. But I approach different ways than that time. Well, so、um, for example,、uh, my first constructed GP top A, I、uh, top A GP in、um, 2019 in Japan. So, well, that time everybody play Oko. There was the Oko meta, right? Oko is not banned. It just reads everybody play blue green Oko. What kind of form of Oko you play? But everybody play Oko. But then I.、Uh, First of all, I decided I will not play Oko, but、uh, then I figured out how would I just just counter Oko. Then、uh, finally, I lose to Oko in the finals,、sure. but I made the final of the GP. But well, I I I played blue white control that time. I would say、uh, how to counter the Oko game plan is to first of all they have Nessa and Oko. They are they are just powerful planeswalkers. So you need counter spells and the、uh, planeswalker removals. Uh, there was a, um, ru- uh, well, I I don't recall the card name. Just three mana enchantment can kill a cre- uh, kill and um, just a planeswalker or creature and square one. And I want to use four of these card. Also, I want to using more counter spell. Like there was a card called two mana one blue counter target legendary spells. Um, um, well, long story short, uh, I feel like、uh, how to solving the Oko meta is by. First of all, well, I I want to make the Oko plus、uh, less good, so I don't want to play any creature, big creature in my deck. You can either by play cat, oven at that time they are cat oven combo, so make the Oko plus one less good. Also, I want to have a solution to the, just I want to that there, there are called called、uh, four blue XX. You can take a just take permanent from others. So I want to max my ways、mm. to solving those plants walkers. This is quite straightforward. I want to make his plus worse, so I don't want to inter interaction with board. I want to I want solving all the like、uh, plants walker levels. I want to take your plants walker, counter those things, sweep your board, then take your plants walkers. Of course, there are the problems since there are、um, counters. Uh, uh, there are counters, right? The the blue green. Then I have to play Teferi, the time revelers. Then you you cannot play your counter spells. So the game plan is shaped of itself, right? You can solve in this and this. Of course, there are like card orders. You cannot change how the top of the deck. You might actually draw counter spell later, and the the sweeper no longer works since they are plants walkers. But overall, I think well, it's a you, good plan. How do you decide? Like、time. this is something so, I always I I'm super curious about. Like how do you decide to play the counter to the best deck versus、mm-hmm. playing the best deck? Like why why not just play the best deck? Do you think you have such a? Did you think you had a big edge or advantage playing the blue white? Uh, basically, I don't think I have the big edge play the Oko、ah, okay. in the mirror, since I think everybody do kind of, kind of similar things. There was a there there are also a lot of、uh, fail cases. Like、uh, 
In PT Dominaria, everybody play red black vehicles. It was a red black meta. So I built a deck called uh, Asper Mirage. I tried to mm. beat the red black meta. Then every single deck I lose in the PTR red black. I lose to six red black. But in, uh, during my test, it was like I have like, over 70% so, uh, against the red black. Of course, there are variances, but overall, I don't think I uh, just respect some of the quality of plays. So uh, PD players are better. So there are plans is from my practice. Um, my plan worked because people cyber differently. Um, well, I, I, and, and actually, it, it actually just, just hurt me a lot about, uh, wow, Magic Online is no longer a good platform, so I have to play with better players, you know, so the meta game is so different. Um, but the idea is the same, right? You, you, you will fail sometimes, but my logic thing since I want to counter so you mentioned you know some yeah. examples of constructed preparation so how do you do that for limited because like mm -hmm. are you just when you're preparing for high level limited events right are you just constantly drafting on magic mm -hmm. online uh, I mean or are you practicing with a like a, a local group like how or are you practicing with like other pro players in other parts of the world but on webcam like how do you, how are you doing the practice in limited, I don't think it's too many secrets there. Since uh, I always watching a lot of streamers like uh, um, Ham Ham TV is the best, <laughs> and uh, like Kenji mm -hmm. Igashira or Shuta Yasoka. A lot of players, a, a lot of people streaming Magic. Um, so streaming limited. So I will open Twitch to like uh, three okay. different uh, windows in Twitch. So zoom, zoom two plus, and I see what they are doing, and uh, if they are at some point it was a, a very interesting some Deci like decision uh, or a very interesting point. So yeah. very different pick order. Yeah, yeah, very very different pick order from my uh, expectation. I will take it if it's really. I, I was thinking, oh, he's thinking this way. Let me try that, and I can see how they yeah. differ from each other. You know, so it, it will be uh, quite. Um, interesting for me and then I study 17 lands a lot like um, I think it's a very <laughs> just um, you know I, I I've been playing uh, poker professionally for some while I, I just mentioned it here so I'm quite uh, driven by the data analysis and uh, how the 17 lands data shifts not only which card is best but in the color combination or it's better than last week mm. There are reason behind it, so I want to. <laughs> I always study those reasons, and I find it very interesting. Then I can just, um, you know, adapt to the my draft histories to see how my draft logs or arenas differ from just now. My understanding is different from like two weeks ago. Then there are some are generally some new understandings. So um, I, I won't say that. Um, there are too many rules I follow. I just follow my heart. I found it interesting I would do that. And uh, I'm not just strictly following what I thought. It's not that scientific thing. So, well, uh, I do think I always enjoy play drafts. So the, the number one reason I'm, you know, focus on those two weeks before a tournament is I, I'm still I'm still enjoying this stuff so I, I, I'm loving mm -hmm. draft and sometimes streaming them so it never be a pressure also like data seems very tedious but it's also just it's kind of a being a okay. kind of nature so it's not, for me. it's it's not a job in that sense like you still enjoy it. you enjoy the preparation or the process no, 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 no. Um, yeah, yeah for sure and I also want to also I want to also touch on something you mentioned which is the the mental aspect because you said that for you you play magic because it's mentally mm -hmm. challenging or you're or i shouldn't say mentally challenging but you're you're learning or you're growing from being involved in the game right otherwise you said you would have quit a long time yeah. ago so mm -hmm. tell me a bit more about that like mm -hmm. what how has magic helped you in terms of that like you can be specific or general um but just i want to know like has magic helped you through some tough times? Like, has magic given you some validation in life or in your career or magic career? Like, how 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 is it? What's your relationship with magic from a mental perspective? 
Well, I will give you a story. So when I was uh, in primary school, I would say 10 or 11 years old, uh, our family always play uh, Basuven. It's a poker. It's a, it's a poker like variant. I don't like know a, if you've heard of that. Like a, just a card game, basically, right? Yeah. Uh, basically, just uh, you and the opposite are a team and a four player game. So anyway, every weekend we play that game. And uh, at that time, I'm a, I'm a little child, right? So I always be quite tilted. <laughs> since, when you lose, um, you mean? You get tilted. Um, you know, I've been having... Yeah, I'm I having a very, very good uh, opening hand. And uh, I don't think I play it poorly. i just thinking it's like unlucky. It's exactly a ring to the opponent's stuff. So... Every week, I wouldn't say every week. I I keep losing, but they are my family member. It matter, but I get so tilted. So every every weekend, I I, I even just crying, shout out sure. as I'm saying. So you're you're you know, very competitive. It's a little child stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I I think it's from my heart that I I think it's humiliated or something in my very little child. But anyway, from that time I. I'm quite just, I don't know how to think. But then, more I play Magic, the uh, way I thinking a lot of different things about toward world or toward uh, how people's interactions with each other are more rationally or, well, based on a lot of logic, you know. So, the Magic tell me to, first of all, just calm down <laughs> and we have to figure it out. And step on step by step, we have to figure out. There are locks in magic, variances magic. I was thinking like magic is, um, I would say 70% of luck is 30% skill, but uh, also, you know, it, it, it just helped me to just overcome my earlier childhoods. A lot of, I would say, not 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 very healthy just mentally thinking things so um then i, I would say just uh magic toward just it changed everything i thinking about what the, the way i think i think the most important things is we we learn how to think in magic if you want to approach a very high level most of the um people i met through magic if they are like very successful magic players they also being quite successful, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't brag too much about magic circuits or the just take magic seriously. But uh, most of the guys I met, if they are good magic players, they also have a their specific perspective about life. Generally, uh, they have a happier life. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. So basically, it's the main mental reason. Mental aspect mental helps aspect. you uh, control your emotions or manage your emotions. Yeah, basically yeah. become a better person, right? Yeah. Not not only. But I, I guess I guess <laughs> yeah. a, one part of the question is like, you you learned all that already. So is it is it now like you're doing magic still a little bit part time because you want to constantly be uh, involved in that world, or like, or do you, I guess maybe a better way to ask the question is like, do you still feel like you have goals for magic that are remaining, or? Is magic just a part of you? So it's like I just you just do magic because it's like you know I go I go running so maybe I don't have a goal like I'm just I just I just enjoy it. So is it yeah, is yeah. it more like enjoyment or is it more like goal space or it's like a combination? Yeah, it's a combination I would say. But yeah, I, I refer to some books I've been reading. So I've been uh, touching something about the Asian Chinese philosophy, like Buddhism, or um, let me think. Yeah, part of Buddhism, part of the Tao, or just just Asian Chinese wisdom from somebody speak up. So, well, let me think how to how to say it in English. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. So, in Chinese philosophy, we don't have a something called self fulfillment. There are the Maslow. Yeah, that's a Western uh, concept. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've been learning through the Western concept since I've been grow up learning, just taking business schools. And uh, I've been in, in my college, I learned a German, uh, German teacher will come to China to teach. Yeah, whatever. Just, 
the the Western knowledge people always need to have something like self fulfillment and then the, the very basic level to very high level, right? So everything need a target or a just ultimate. You need a, to have a inside motivation for you to do anything, right? So in Chinese philosophy, however, I learned that in we are not really driven by a specific a lot of self fulfillment target. We are driven by so we have very easy to understand happiness picture. Like what is happiness? Happiness is you have a very healthy family. You have a uh, your dad and mom are healthy. Your child is healthy. You play together. Yeah. You are having a happy life. That's the Chinese philosophy of healthy. Then we go through uh, just go through the Chinese philosophy. There are also a lot of branches. They are not telling you to do nothing but enjoy families. They are telling you to enjoy the moment. Um, so uh, I would need a translation actually. Uh, have you been reading those things like uh, uh, there is a phrase called the uh, um, just. Sure. <laughs> just uh, uh, which means uh, everything you see is um, is not real as it is. You are mm-hmm. James Xu. Probably there are hundred <laughs> guy named James Xu. It's yeah, not yeah, that yeah. everyone is James Xu. <laughs> so the only thing you enjoy is the appearance. So you need to dig into the appearance to see the nature, the true nature of everything. So. Why I play magic? Why I play magic is because I enjoy the magic itself, or I need to the target to be playing the wars. Well, for me, I first of all I do enjoy play wars, <laughs> and I want to win more. But uh, it's not because I uh, I'm a person driven by that goal. It's because I enjoy mm. the current moments of playing magic, mm-hmm. and I enjoy making decisions. So I'm not targeting anything. I just make my decision better and I enjoy making decisions even though some decisions are bad and uh, that's the real approach to the game like um, um, in in a Buddha there's called uh, the Buddha is Jiu-Jitsu, you know just the realizer or accomplisher to translation it's not like a, a god you're not trying to become a god you are trying to become a, a, a enlightened or uh, real life. Yeah, the Buddha is not <laughs> not, a, like, not like Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah. Buddha is uh, was a was a human that reached the uh, enlightenment. I don't know how to say that in Chinese, um, but like, I don't know if this is what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah it's interesting. Like you have both background of <laughs> Western and Eastern. I yeah, assume you I know mean, some just of a the little bit. Eastern so knowledge about for me, it's actually a, a little bit flipped, right? Because I grew up in Canada, but Actually, mm-hmm. our whole family was like Catholic, so Tianzhu Jiao. So I grew up on a very Western way, oh, and oh. I didn't actually yeah. really start to understand. <laughs> I, and even now, I'm still very, very ignorant about Eastern or Chinese philosophy until maybe the last ten years. I started reading a, a little bit, like introduction to Fu Jiao Buddhism and things like that, just to get the the concepts. Um, but I think I think you're right, like. Um, it, it's it's like the it's like the stereotype says right i think it's a true stereotype like for chinese or for asian people maybe it's less about individual it's more about like what makes me happier what makes me fulfilled is my family or the group it's not it's not always about me and i think in the west if i can generalize it yeah. it uh, this is not even outside of religion just in general now it seems like it's very much about me 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 like how can i improve myself like i'm the i'm the, the protagonist heroes, i'm the right? hero like how do I make myself happier, right? Mm-hmm. It's never about, I shouldn't say never, but it's more emphasized on how do I make myself happy? And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's more about the ego. But I, but I, it's interesting conversation because if, it feels very against the concept of like competition and poker and magic because these events are all about self-accomplishment. Like there really isn't anything that's like, yeah, it was, uh, you, you know what I mean? Like in the end, people will remind her, will re- remember James yeah, yeah, because yeah. you, you, you top eight a GP or something like that. It's not just about like, mm, you know, it, it's more about the self, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it's not myself. It's not, yeah, for sure. But um, I mean, maybe it's not the whole 
Buddha means t- tell you to only focus others. It's it's about uh, part of its reason is to part of the just he want to you us to do good things, help o- help others, or at least doing something called Tian Dao. You know, just everything is the natural rules push it. You don't mm-hmm. against the good things. So uh, towards magic is you do good things. It's not exactly how you. Uh, you know, just winning the game by crushing your opponent. It's not a good thing. <laughs> the good thing perhaps being you are uh, positive yourself on when you are losing. Mm-hmm. You can't take it differently, you know. You can have all the perspective of seeing that. So you are striving or work very really hard on something mm-hmm. with a happy mood. It's already good. Like, it's a good moment. And it, sometimes I streaming, maybe I, I, I want to say that I help a lot of people. But, you know, I try to just... Show people, hey, I, I think it differently. Like, even I draw like 10 lands in this game. I've been still hanging there, maybe winning, but I'm not mm-hmm. complaining. I'm lucky. And uh, I just take whatever the fate tell me to do, and I smile to it. And, uh, you know, a lot of things you can just take into life, not only just, yeah, it is a competitive game. It's winner is winner. But... Once you win, it's it's not like you are championship. It will be your tag forever. Mm-hmm. You're just back to yourself. You you are you're, you're a normal person. You're enjoying the game, and uh, trying to make others also enjoying or just interaction with the opponent. We are just just playing mm-hmm. the very interesting things. Um, well, so we are not just as magic or as as poker players. We are not actually having GDP to the country by productively having some good services to somebody or but we are actually produce something I think it's not only about the just very fact um, just like a food or whatever service but we are just help the community overall the human community to, to, to community to be a better place that's actually not conflict as you take the western cultures the um, well, I, I'm not pretending I know it. The Catholic uh, people also have the, just, they, the God also tell you to just perform better sure. yourself. They, they, they tell you to do good things, you know, right? So it, it, it's not conflict. It? Also the, like the, the very fundamental of the human nature is to have good willings, mm-hmm. you know, to be kind. Everything yeah, is think, just related so. to each other. Um, yeah. How did you? What made you want to explore the philosophy more in recent years? Um, there are. Uh, I've been reading a lot of books, not only the Tanjing and the Wang Yangming. I've been talking with you, so basically, uh, I've been learning these things to thinking. Just in ancient times, there are too many big topics. People have war, people are starving, suffering from a lot of things. And uh, I've been appreciated nowadays, the modern area more. Like we, as human beings, we are not just from the peace. <laughs> and, and, and actually, we are not just enjoying the full peace, you know. Just we have to have our own peace. And uh, the human is not uh, just from a big picture from the universe you know we are not suspicious to be ego enough to um say we are the domain of the universe we we are kind of just being very small element of it and uh to thinking a big picture i will find my uh, whatever i do like play magic or like investment some good thing bad thing happen it's a very very small part of the whole universe and uh in the end actually we Everybody dies or some cliche like that. So we, we actually just being very, just living your own life better. Not care about anything or others. Not care about, uh, even not care about tomorrow. Just living the moment. You don't know what happened. So basically what I took is the, uh, put it, put us in a very small angle, a very small like, quantum of the very big things. And then thinking about what you can do and that you can just approach the Asian wisdoms, whatever, what are they doing, like meditation, whatever, just trying you yourself into the zone and then everything become better. Well, that's a very um, mature attitude. Not a lot of people decide to 
to learn about that, right? Because I think it's sometimes easier to live through, go through life in society to not think too much about it. Because if thinking too much about it, I, I've been there, like yeah. there have been times where I try to really go deep in the philosophy and I end up getting more depressed because then I, the more I think like, yeah. What's the meaning of anything, right? Like, because we're so small, like, <laughs> I, I like to use the example, even Barack Obama, he's he, he in the in the in the whole time, of the universe, it's nothing, nobody will remember, like the US president, like, or the leader of a country, because the the universe, yeah, the galaxy yeah. is so, it's so big. So sometimes like when you when you think the more you think about it, the more you realize that life is kind of meaningless. Um, I know this. We're going really far away from a magic podcast, but do you have do you have have you had thoughts like that? Because I have had thoughts like that. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I'm not being negative about this. I think it's like it is what it is. Uh, I've been reading a book, uh, Alfred Adler, called "Bei Tao Yan Yongxi." I don't know how to translate that. Uh, is it's, there... a, it's talking yeah. about Adler's. Yeah, it's, it's a philosophy book about Adler's, uh, like his approach to things. So he thinks. From Floyd, every past to now is that they are they're linked. Since if you are grow up in a very unhappy family, there you are raised by unhappy, unhappy. So it will infect your current life. So you might want to lock yourself in the room or something like that. It's the Floyd uh, philosophy. But Allah says it, it do nothing with that. You can only uh, you only lock yourself because you want to lock yourself to make yourself comfortable. So so your previous experience didn't have nothing to do with current you you only ha have to do with this yourself so that you lock yourself right so his philosophy told you to just oh because i want to let people think i'm a victim i because i have earlier years so i lock myself mm -hmm. to make myself comfort this is the philosophy so to encounter this to counter this in the meta game, you have to just go out and move forward because you move forward because the whole picture is you your experience, former experience, don't do with your future. So now I become more self-driven about the future because I'm only the current to make a future. So it doesn't matter how universe has been doing like in maybe in whatever years your family will be broken, there are some disasters in the earth, whatever, but it's not something I'm being concerned or how small I am to everything. I'm just the only current myself. Like I've been learned from the Buddha is also the just living the current. Mm -hmm. It's it's quite similar actually in the Western knowledge. I mean from magic, like when we took the lose, we oh I'm O N two. I'm already out of this tournament. But it doesn't matter what you've been done and uh, the term over is fine if you what if, if you want to enjoy life mm -hmm. it's only from this moment so if you want to just there are always another magic tournament right there are always another like pptq so you can always try to follow your heart what you want to do now and then mm -hmm. to prepare for the next so yeah also I think everything linked together. It's not like we are all yeah, talking about yeah. the universe things. I, 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 think, <laughs> I think it's like, there's always things that it's always about, like what you're saying. It's always about right now. It's always about the, the current or the present. Right. And we can only control yeah, sure, sure. what, what we're yeah. doing right now. So we shouldn't say that this is meaningless or meaning or meaningful. It's just, it just is, it, it's, yeah, it's just meaning, what it is. Exactly. And we, the only thing we can do is what we can do now. Right. So, why not? Why not just do yeah, something? Yeah, exactly. Because the alternative of is way worse. Um, <laughs> uh, but I also want to like tie this a little bit back to magic because when I play magic tournaments, <sighs> I, I I hope you can relate to this. Like my my most memorable magic moments or the happiest I've been in magic is not some kind of tournament where I had the great the best draws and I just crushed everybody and it was easy. Right? It's always the ones where <laughs> it felt hard it felt hard and i had to navigate like a 50 50 decision and i and i navigated it correctly and you feel so good because afterwards you're like mm -hmm. you it's basically like coming back from a position that's disadvantaged like uh you know can you tell me about yeah. maybe some examples of like where 
being mentally strong like it helped you like were there certain like moments in some tournaments or events where you really felt that that it, it really like you know it because every player we have like a, our own internal hall of fame like you know what were our best moments right so do you do you have moments like that <laughs> that's related to kind of like the being mentally strong or things like that um how could i give a real let me think well, okay. Uh, I think I'm always being stuck in a scenario from the past. Like uh, every tournament, I lack. Uh, if I made the first mistake, I will be feel really bad about it. The first mistake is so bad, you know. The for instance, the a PT have like sixteen rounds. If you make a mistake in round three, then it will affect you. Oh, I made a mistake. I won't be top eight. And then I made the second mistake. I won't be date you. There are, well, you, you would you have this feeling like you made a mistake this one this game and the next game you get manuscript. There are always these kind of feelings. But uh, after I studied the uh, you know all the things like philosophy thing about just sticking, I'm um, sticking uh, sticking to the current and uh, just present to what happened. You you already made mistake. Already made mistake. Um, I would say like last year in a PT, online PT, I uh, play Rafael Lavi. Maybe I made a mistake, a very bad mistake. There was a card called a Power War Kill or something. It cannot kill Oh, yeah, dragon. yeah, it's a removal spell. It says and everything I, but dragon or demon or something like that. Yeah. Power Word Kill. But I tried to kill um, another, Rafin, maybe, I, I don't know. Well, anyway, just uh, it's a wrong target. I saw I can kill that, but I can't, right? So I was, oh, no, I just waste my two mana. This is a constructed, uh, it's just disastrous. But then I come down to, uh, okay, it's already been made. And um, then, so it is what it is. So what I can do is I play next and better. So then it just being a comeback story. Or like uh, a later PT. There was I, I'm not very confident about our team decking standard, so I go O three day one, and uh, then there uh, O N three or O N four O three day one actually just then I just win ten uh, win four game in row in historic to make day two, and then I uh, go to something like six six and two or six one, so to make the top sixteen. So it's a very big comeback for me so i'm surprised i did it since if i'm in uh like what i am in my like early year so 2014 mm -hmm. i think i can't do that but i always just thinking at the moment so for oh i my, my deck uh the one thing i'm very unhappy about our deck is we played the uh, hive uh just um, the land that the hive of whatever just uh, play and tap team one and the four mana you can turn mm -hmm. into into a three three mm -hmm. manas and the attack is out we play that that landing our main deck but we have danik so you know every time you play that turn one it's conflict with danik you cannot play the danik is one uh it's a mm -hmm. blue and white uh, two three right so in during this tournament the, the, so the you're, thing always, is you're always always thinking like this, this oh, deck is built, built and incorrectly and right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we made the last. Uh, I found Danik in the last moment, like the five or six hour before the submission. I found Danik. I think, guys, you have to play Danik. Mm -hmm. It's so good in our deck. It's a Rafin deck, right? We make Danik life link, and uh, everybody saying, "Oh no, our deck is already locked." Like, like Brand Nails and Sis Manfred, they're all very unhappy to the surprise in the last moment. So I think, no, I have to play it. And uh, some people actually follow me also play it, but we forget to, uh, not forget, we think the hive is fine. It's so important there to exile the opposing some uh, disturbed spells. Well, so the Danic things and the, the conflicts about Danic things and the hive always been my brain for the first three rounds. There was uh, also, sometimes I enjoy it in my first game, I, I would say just, the first game of the tournament, I drew the conflict. I knew it That's before. That's not a good feeling, right? Yeah, to have that come that out right away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Okay. I'm, I'm all three everything, every stand around. <laughs> so then I get all three. So there are attraction laws that you just attract bad things to you, you know, just 
so I, I'm kind of frustrated. So yeah, I just uh, strengthen up things. Oh, it was historic. Um, this is the deck I, I want to. I've been putting a lot of time. I'm confident playing the red black deck, and the uh, main deck hers to target things. And so I just just toward the mistakes. I I just have to put myself back to the normal. It's within like very short period of time. Like the mistake I made versus Rafael V. Also, this, the tournament I. This is the tournament I top it right. I do make a mistake, a huge mistake. I saw and I would never top, mm -hmm. top a tournament with a mistake, and uh, I I don't I never think I I came back from O three, so I made those because of uh I don't have huge belief I will make it. I just doing the current things I I've been confident with, over and over again. So, of course you you have to also let go the high Danic things. It's already a mistake, you know? and and yeah, it is a mistake. So. We're not just, just it's a very huge mistake I think. And uh, day two, I also, um, I, I don't have too much. Maybe three and three the standard round. I, I don't, I don't recur it clearly correctly. But I, I have a more like, I don't. <laughs> please don't think about it. It's, it's already when you drive. It, I also have good feelings, right? Have also, you might actually actually looting away that like you don't want to play it, or you can just. Have Hive is doing the lethal damage. There are also good addings to your deck. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. net negative. So, anyway, just those positive uh, thinkings toward you also drive me to make more mm -hmm. plays within mm -hmm. your ability. Not already happen. Yeah. So, so um, I don't know. It's, it's a, a good, good, it's a good question, answer. Uh, answer um, to your question. Because I, mm -hmm. I also think you touch on something, which is that as a Magic player, you have to have a very you're forced to have a very black and white view. Like I, this, this combination is good or this combination is not good for my deck. Like you need to make judgments. Like magic is dependent on making decisions. You need to be very confident that the decision is right or wrong, which makes it incredibly difficult when you find out that the decision you made is wrong. Like when you tell yourself that objectively, this is not the, a net positive or something, it really then bothers you because you're because you, you know what I mean? Like magic creates a framework where you have to think in black and white, not all the time, but a lot of the time. Right. And then, mm -hmm. and then because you, you, you're, you have this character, then, then you have to also deal with, uh, right and wrong decisions. So I, I, yeah, you know, you know what I mean, right? Yeah, like it's, always... it's really, it's really difficult because, the thing that makes you smart about magic also punishes you about magic, right? Like, because uh, if, if someone is, if someone yeah. doesn't even, if someone is not even at that level of magic player, they, they don't even know that this mistake happened, but, but then they will never be at that level. Like you have to be, you have to be very hard on yourself to be a good magic player. Otherwise you cannot grow, but then growing is just, painful i guess this this is like just saying in life right it's just it's just very painful to to grow in anything because it's always going to have um that feeling you know what i mean i've been uh, uh, uh reading a very interesting post in twitter by uh reduke said that once you are losing that game yeah you are unlucky probably you are just play everything perfect but you have to also appreciate how good the opponent play maybe your opponent just play very good to just build this position, you know, so it's not only about you, it's also about how we play this game out, and uh, if your opponent play really great, you, you lose, it's fine, appreciate it, even if you, they, they made mistakes, even if they mistrigger a lot the newcomer, they also do a lot of good things by themselves to make this happen, right, so we just appreciate what the, the outcome it is, so, and uh, not only just focus your own just right or wrong things, Instead, we focus more on the game logic, not how the game shape up, how what we learn from. Yeah, last years I've been have privilege to prepare with Reed, and uh, in the preparation I play him right a lot of time. Like when he get mana screwed and crush him, I always feel quite sorry about that. But then his reaction is at least I know Mardu kill people. <laughs> so he always sees the positive when they stub. Okay, <laughs> so. It's, yeah, it's, it's a not learning. only about yeah, positive. Yeah. It's the logic things. It, it, yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not like he. Oh, I'm unlucky. Yeah, everybody probably knows you are unlucky because you just losing this. But for sure, lucky 
or any variance is part of game. You have to just adapt it, but also you find the beauty of it is not the variance. It's just because this game, not only because I still mana, but opponent play Fable, <laughs> Fable snowball quickly, and once you're stuck on two land, only kill whatever turn two, then they Fable crush you. You know this is the power of Fable. So we have to solving the turn three Fable on the draw. This is our just how our approach we approach the game. So uh, yeah, everything just related just to the presence. You know, <laughs> you have to think about the what you can do, and in the future it already happened, and uh, what you can do to do, make it better. Even if there are nothing you can do to make it better, just appreciate mm. opponent what they is do. Is that the biggest thing you learn from Reed in terms of the mindset? Is the appreciation? Um. Yeah, I haven't seen. Uh, yeah, I've been learning a lot of things from him actually. So, uh, my role model, very, very long time ago. I don't know. I suppose to say that uh, I was the biggest fan of Owen Turtonwood. You know, so you can say that it's fine. I maybe mean, he's just, a let's just talk about Owen as a as a player, right? Like, <laughs> um, as yeah, and uh, yeah, 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 and uh, he being quite confident about everything in the in game he just make himself a robot you know Owen has a lot of emotions I've been watching and enjoying his streaming a lot and uh, he always be very very emotional <laughs> you know it's it's very hilarious maybe he acts a little bit a little bit but he naturally he's a very funny person well anyway in game he's always calm even losing he shake hand you we will see the um, just you, see, happy, you see some emotion, very, but he's very, trying uh, to make himself a robot, again, right? Was, yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, after game already done, but in game he always just very calm and focus only on the decisions. So this is a very, you know, I learn from Reed also like he is execute everything detailedly very well and calm and think everything through. And uh, I don't know the other person can just in the first angle playing a legacy GP and uh, every round he did on the like uh, future table and uh, let you record and he finishes everything perfectly. Oh my God, uh, it's it's unreal, but he did it and he also made a very good result. So, um, so I've been learning from those big names a lot. Also, uh, make, yeah, Owen also be inspired me from the very beginning of my career like how confident he is before every gp he saying like uh thanks with us to putting ten thousand mm. grand to me <laughs> before the gp you know so uh, i i've been carried that confidence in the uh, uh, early part of my career you know or the beginning i play i always thinking oh i will cross these things before i played then i uh just yeah, in PPTQ level, you always be crushing since you yeah, might yeah. be slightly better than your opponent. But in GP level, uh, PT level specifically, uh, after I being like a nine and three, I was, I was thinking, hey, this PT I will, <laughs> I will get very good. Then I get nine, nine, just nine and seven one. So it, it's there are a lot of times like I being overconfident uh, toward the expectations, you know. So yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing. However, you can just leverage it with confidence. You also have to have logic, but uh, from different ways, you can just every just everybody can be confident. But uh, you have to to control your confidence. You know, so there are a lot of things I can learn from this guy, and uh, you know, just learn. Yeah, the good I part mean, and after you realize that you cannot crush the the PTs because the players are, are so good. Is that, is that when you decide to change your, your mindset mm -hmm. or was it something else? Yeah, I, I didn't uh, like specifically focusing on changing mindset. This mindset is, uh, actually I, I've been taking a class from my poker since I've been playing poker and uh, taking some courses. There are a uh, very elite poker coach called Ilya Teroit. Uh, you know, she, uh, he give you a lot of like suggestions on life on um, uh even just what you eat what's your routines how to meditate before games to have a better state to the poker game it's also applied to magic actually so he is having a perspective of you actually you when you meditate before the games you already meditate some very very hard 
scenarios. So if I get bad beats or if I get very like if I done ten buyings, I can imagine in in, med, in meditative process I already meditate those. So then when it real happens, you try you already be quite calm about that. So when you never draw your so you already visualize when you what, never what could happen. hit the okay. right cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will do that before some large tournaments like arena opens. So uh, it actually helps me to perform better. So okay. it's a do you have to visualize um, arena crashing because mm -hmm. that can also happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, oh, yeah, something my, happened uh, in one of your I events, mentioned right? that I'm chasing rivals, right? Yeah, my Yoren in the sideboard cannot uh, move uh, anywhere. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it was in my rivals tracing movement. So I was like two missing points to lock the rivals since I have 20 missed points the first few months. And then, well, it, it's, it's a devastating story. Just uh, my computer went wrong. So for the reason I want to just win this tournament to go rivals to ballet. So I bought a new computer immediately, the desktop computer for the, so I, I tried to test it in arena and it's fine. And then when I played, I encountered the Yoren just bug, so I cannot sideboard and losing because of it. At that time, I'm still in the game. I'm just, I'm three and one. I can still play, but I, I'm just mm. mentally I'm I'm not normal. So I, at that time, you know, 2019 and 2020 something like that. So, well, anyway, eventually, finally, I got to the just two missed points short of being rivals. So I, I it's it's quite devastating to recall back, but I think it's fine just because now I don't see it as a. Actually, what you cannot change and what you can change, you can't distinguish it to, uh, yourself, you know. Deep inside your heart, you know it's luck or it's the factor that you can do better. In magic, we all, or we always uh, uh, just bad variances hit you. We always say, that, oh, we mainly because bad variances. But actually, you can do something probably. Actually, there are a lot of just choose different decks or... You know, even though that happened after that, you can just do better. Even though, the, yeah, you only unlucky kick you out of the tournament. You can also do it better next time. So there are different mindsets, and uh, I never blame Arena. Well, in China, you know, we have mm -hmm. bad network conditions. So if we want to play Magic Online, we have to use VPNs. And uh, Magic Online, I don't know. If you have the same experience in China. Play Magic Online. It's, it's yep. stuck a lot. Yep. It's a first lag. of all. First of all, I've been using um, you know Linti as a it's it's a it's a VPN I use for Magic Online in China. Yeah, I use yeah. it one hundred percent of the time. First of all, if I don't use VPN, it's unplayable. But secondly, you're right. Sometimes even when you use VPN, there's just some really frustrating stuff happens. Like I don't it's know why. Bad. Like oh, it's just suddenly stuck. I have to restart the client, and it's yeah, it's a network it's a network issue, right? Yeah, so the, it, it can be frustrating. Even even when I'm just playing no, a match that has no it's like no consequence. Like even if I'm playing a league, I get pissed off. Like oh my god, I have to re like, am I losing this this game because of this network thing, right? So, yeah, I've been losing two PD PDQs because of just lag or the network problems. But uh, eventually, you are have to adapt to what it is. Like you are in China, it's it yeah. is what it is. You have to play quicker or you choose a different hack. Mm -hmm. It's part of the reason. What I'm trying, what I'm trying to say is there are a lot of just factors that can hurt you badly. It's not the in magic things, even you know. Just uh, for example, when I lost my mystic invitation in Los Angeles, I played it just ranked top eight. I think I made it because my uh, left time zone of my computer shows exactly twelve o'clock, and I won this game. I should be in top eight. Then when I get out of the ring, though. I, I find my computer time is uh, five minutes later than the exactly Las Vegas time. So it, it's I don't know the settings, but uh, you know just these five minutes maybe just the rank is not counting in the the, the last win. So it's also being very frustrated. It's not magic things, but you know what you can what can you do at that time? I'm I'm just. I just, <laughs> I don't know what to do since I'm assuming I getting the top eight when I being ranked number one, like two mm -hmm. hours before the deadline. So, well, a lot of just bad things being happened, but I also be super grateful that it's only magic since it's not your life that like <laughs> my, my mm -hmm. parents has been well being back to the mm -hmm. Chinese philosophy that everything is good. And it's only like, 
a PDQ, that's, whatever. That's <laughs> easy to say, but hard to do in the moment. I mean, I, I don't know what I would have done. Maybe I would have um, destroyed my computer or I would have thrown my computer out the, the window or something. Like, I would have been extremely <laughs> angry. And I say this to someone who is usually quite calm, um, but that that just sounds really tough. Um, yeah. Um, I also want to talk a little bit you know, we've been talking about things that are just general issues with magic. And I've talked to a lot of people who are like, have talked about their challenges with MPL or competitive magic. But I, I want to just ask you, like, on top of the general feedback about magic organized play, um, is there some, are there things about magic specifically in China that you can talk about that m might make it challenging, right? Because we talked about how like so few yeah, people are trying to, sure. uh, uh, really be super competitive in China. And it's kind of like a chicken and the egg. Maybe on one hand, maybe it's like, it's not a good career, but also on the other hand, maybe the infrastructure is not good. So you can't have a good career. So maybe, maybe you can talk a bit about that too, about China. Yeah. So everybody knows that Chinese, uh, the magic arena in Chinese is different uh, from what US has. Like we have to just, first of all, we have also used VPN to play arena. Like you, you can just play without VPN, but it will be very unstable. You know, there are risks not playing. So, uh, I mean, five years ago, Tencent, a Chinese big company, just took Arena and they just, they just took the Magic Arena as a, a, a tool in their weapons. They don't care about money. Uh, I'm not speaking for the company. Okay, so I'm speaking for myself. My perspective: they took it for the weapon to fight. Uh, Wang Yi's yeah. Uh, so so in China, they don't another, really need another, to So Tencent it. is Did a you... company in China. Another company is uh, NetEase, and NetEase owns the Hearthstone. And then so yeah. for for Tencent, it's like I want Magic yeah. Arena because it's my portfolio to fight against uh, another game. Yeah, potentially I can just really fight the yeah. But now Hearthstone out of China, and uh, then the Tencent, the contracts that do or whatever, we never play a single day of true. Uh, simplify Chinese or yes, Chinese Magic Arena UI never happened. So, well, there are people using the they they doing the translate themselves, and uh, I don't know how they got paid or something. I, I, exactly, just so everything just fall apart. We have a very good expectation at the very first, then everything fall apart. So for five years, so we don't have any more expectation to whether to better thing about the Chinese market. Or maybe we don't have the, you know, from the crop free level, the, the revenue they make from the paper magic are enough. They don't care about this or whatever. But I do think it's so shame or just such a good game. We don't have a Chinese version. It's, it, it's, it's like just if I can just have a um, Chinese app of Magic Arena, I can very easily refer to my friends, right? That they are not just related to they, they mm -hmm. are interested in magic but they cannot just access to it in english level you know in china mm -hmm. i understand that there's a lot of there's a lot of magic players that just don't understand english and this is not like a judgment they just don't understand english <laughs> and I, I, I was actually very surprised that they only want chinese cards like i i used to think like that everybody in china would also be okay with magic in English and English cards, but no, actually there's like people that are just hundred percent want Chinese language only like very, very localized. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, language is a part of things. Another thing is like, if we want to play, uh, for example, we want to play magic online PTQs. Well, nowadays the PTQs are only for the RPT, uh, the regionals, right? So we can only live in the U S time zone, like the mock things every tournament happened in the night of Chinese time, like uh, yeah. 10 p.m. It's 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 super hard for people to like uh, be resilient to just still stay awake yeah, after four rounds. Yeah, if you have any day job or so any regular maybe they schedule, were doing you just okay. can't do it. Yeah. yeah, even in the Saturdays, I can just have coffees, but I was still falling asleep sometimes. So if you want to be competitive magic, the first thing I always recommend that you can you have to have a good like time zone. You you have to just force your time into American time zone to play the American games. Mm -hmm. So it's a big issue. 
Well, not everybody need to do that, but yeah, I mean, Li Shitian also just, he has a very top MPL players, but he never just you know, sleep. So just play those very late night games since he actually mm-hmm. really was, yeah, he's talented. Actually, <laughs> I don't, and yeah, well, and, uh, you know, from the paper magic things, we don't have too many, um, you know, the P, there are only four uh, PT slots in a tournament like 240 players in the upcoming RC. So I think it's quite few numbers. And uh, I do think uh, it related to the scare, we should at least have eight slots, whatever. So, And uh, in China, people, you know, have to uh, take their expense, just try to fly to another continent themselves. There are no, like... Uh, PTs in Japan or PT in Singapore. I don't know how the cost level. Well, from my perspective, we used to have the slogan of play game, see the world. But, uh, you know, nowadays, um, the visa is a problem. You know, it's just two of the Magic Worlds competitors. They are meant to play Worlds in the Las Vegas this year. They only, they can't go there because of the visa. It's it's disastrous, right? And you, you just qualify from a... 300 first pl- 200 player tournaments you got first place and uh, you can go nothing and uh, I think they have to just develop a alternative plan and maybe reward them with another mm-hmm. PT invite or something like that just just uh, visa is a big, big problem I'm saying like I am a uh, well I graduated from a, a university with uh, I can have some job proof but a lot of people just come from the second tier cities and they cannot just pass the visa and yeah, this is a system we need to just improve. And, well, mainly the arena things. I think we have to launch the Chinese, simplified Chinese, so whatever agents you find. And I, I'm sure there are plenty of, like, game companies willing to take mm-hmm. this magic to their main products. I think it goes back to so. chicken and egg problem, because, um, for example, if Tencent owns arena, uh, maybe the reason they don't do anything with it is because they don't see the... The potential growth right so there's no don't leave there's no motivation to do it but on the other hand if you don't do anything it will also not grow so it's like it's a it's a two-sided problem right it's like a mm-hmm. how do you say it like it's it's bad circulation like if you don't do anything definitely nothing will happen right so it's just it's just very mm-hmm. unfortunate and it sounds like there's some volunteers try to do like unofficial simplify Chinese arena, but it's not, it's not sustainable yeah, yeah, yeah. and you have to have some official power behind it. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, from my experience, I do, I haven't played a lot of other games, but I do think magic is the best game wise, uh, the, the, the entertainment wise, I think it can surpass Hearthstone a lot in my experience mm-hmm. if they really release it or just do anything about it. But well, we, we haven't played. Um, well, in Paper Magic, also, like, people uh, find the boosters pack are uh, increasing price, and uh, there are not too many ways to sell the cards, you know. Just from Japanese, it's a very healthy, the cycle is healthy. Like, the, the players will sell cards to the stores, and it's a, yeah. in a fair rate, right? But the, in China, they were taking very, very low price, and uh, it's not healthy, so... Well, everything race relates together. Uh, then the markets will be <laughs> that's because that uh, people don't play standard anymore. Or uh, I think everything just starts with if they really take Chinese mm-hmm. market seriously. Um, I'm not thinking that pol- political political wise, maybe there are some barriers between the governments. You know, you cannot uh, have the license to uh, put the Tencent to 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 just Tencent can't put the major arena online just because the license. But uh, I do think there are different approach ways to. Yeah, I don't know how. I cannot speak from a very big side. I know I'm. A that, that's very okay. I mean, guy, we're all so. we're all little guys. <laughs> Actually, I think, I I think really uh, we're all looking at it from a consumer point of view. But it's it's important, right? And and I think that um, yeah. if you use the Magic and Hearthstone comparison, like Magic has so much advantage mm-hmm. assets because if you do it well, the online and the offline Magic can really promote each other in China or anywhere really. But it's just it just feels like an asset that's very 
underutilized. Like I'm not saying I'm not I'm not trying to jump directly to the solution, but imagine like introducing someone introducing someone to Magic Arena and you tell them also there's like a social thing you can do in the store. Maybe there's like some promotion that happens between the online and offline. It can really like if you do if you do it right, you can really get people interested in the in the game. But it just feels like none of that is happening. And that's that's the frustrating part. Is like you have these assets, but you need someone to really like drive it and put and and combine everything together, you know. I think the the other problem is uh I think they are really comfort with the situation in Chinese market because people are there are a lot of bots in China want to wrap the yeah wrap the so they're, it's selling the, so from a bottom business target, perspective yeah. they're like why why do I want to do anything else right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like they are making money like one uh, I heard that in the stores that uh, one boss can um maybe maybe the Ju uh, Zhen what they call it uh, collector booster or something. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Collect booster, whatever. Just they, they can just have like a, a, a whole night. One person can open the yeah. like uh, over over. Uh, yeah, 10, yeah, yeah. US I, I, I've definitely. It's, yeah, it's like people like to. Them, uh, right? It's it's basically a form. Uh, again, maybe I shouldn't say that. It's like a form of gambling or some sort of um, almost like some almost like legal gambling. <laughs> it's like okay, let's. Sure. What can I open? Yeah, China, exactly yeah, no, right. No yeah, I think people should understand <laughs> people that too. Like, it. it's it's basically a way to get like um, it's like a social status showing off, but also like it's just fun to like gamble, and yeah, it's yeah. very unique. I think um, to use the gaming term, it's like there are a lot of whales, like jingyu, a lot of whales for magic packs <laughs> in China, right? So. Yeah, they they kind of just taking it as a fun. They are not so. They are not thinking I really it's, want yeah, to sell it. Yeah, it's just it, like the you know? it's just like the rush. What can <laughs> I stop... open? I don't even think they care about like making the money back or, yeah. Yeah, they are not care about making money over that. But they they do care about the value. They think, oh, I open yeah. a thousand bucks. It's like this oh, card, one dollar became it, ten dollars or something not really like that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like people open booster, so from the corporate side, the the revenues and incomes and they, they come from this well. See, <laughs> so I think magic is more about just putting more people to open a booster instead of let the whales to just yeah. the revenue from the whales. You know, so everybody can open boosters and uh, you know everybody can just even enjoy magic yeah. from the commons and commons after this it's their <laughs> cycles isn't it? so you, we are not building the game like only for them to open boosters or then fulfill your revenue so just you know just make your company feel comfortable that chinese market already or so many yeah. revenues that we don't need to change anything so yes, there are a lot absolutely. of problems here and you know? so, it's uh it's the whole classic like short-term uh revenue profit thinking versus long-term uh sustainability of the game and and I think I'm more like you. Like I always, whenever I see someone just open the packs, I always look. I always think like, what a waste! You could have drafted it. Like you could have done something with these cards. Instead, you just open the pack, you throw all the commons away, and then you put the one card in your binder, and then or you show it. You you show it on your WeChat, and that's it. It's like, oh man, that's such a waste. Like you could have enjoyed like a draft or do something with these cards the way they were designed. But that's okay. It's people bought it with their money. <laughs> they they have the right to do whatever they want with it. But you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. But uh, I, I don't. Are there any the, the similar situation? I really in don't Canada, see it. I think out. China. I've seen the most extreme example. I I really don't see so much in North America like the whales. I I really I yeah. really don't. I think most people yeah. are really just complaining most... about how it's too expensive, and most people do it but maybe it's a cultural thing like people also don't really want to it's almost like they don't really want to show off like they they probably do it but they do it at home or or they do it on when they're streaming but they don't they don't do it in the yeah. store with like yeah. everybody watching and <laughs> and like oh you know like which one are you going to open you know it's not like that yeah that that uh, booming business related to this is uh streaming yeah. open boosters you know in China, I think the only specific in China, the magic booster become a you, you know streaming somebody, uh, like they can pack their own card. At the, well, the store owner will pack different reality of card together. As oh yeah, like uh, they they they, re, uh, so they repack they and then they sell the the mystery booster, right? So you can, you, yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, a lot of cards. That, they they just need to put a one value very valuable card in, uh, like ten thousand yeah. boosters. They made their own. <laughs> they sell it for high well, price. Well, they have they have in the US long time ago this, on you know, eBay, I, right? They have stores do that. But I think people just stop a long time ago. People just stopped really? believing that it will have any value. Yeah, I don't think it's. Uh, I think it's fun sometimes, but it's not healthy as you can, like, grow this market. It's over. Just make people play the game. It's it's more about collectible. The, the, yeah, you know, yeah, the gambling, gambling and collectible. Edition. Yeah, yeah, something. Um, James, it's it was really great uh, having a chance to talk to you today about everything. I guess uh, mm. your magic career, career, uh, magic way of life, and and also um, yeah, you know just all kinds of topics. Thank you so much for um, taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Humans of Magic. You've made it to the end. Thanks so much. You're awesome. If you'd like to support the show, there are two ways to do so. The first way is the most powerful. Tell a friend. Tell them to check out Humans of Magic. I'd love it if you could spread the word. The second way is to join the Humans of Magic Patreon at patreon.com slash humans of magic. Patreon is the best way to directly support the show from a financial perspective. For as little as $2 a month, you can support me and join the Discord. It gives me the power to keep cranking out new episodes with your favorite magic people. If you want to go the $5 support route, you'll get a digital copy of the Humans of Magic book. Thank you for listening. I appreciate you, as always, making it all the way to the end, and we'll see you next time.